Hi everyone, it's Miss Book here. Welcome to this week's assembly, which has a science focus. And the reason that I am talking to you about science today is because on Thursday, the 11th of February, it is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. So on Thursday, the International Day of Women and Girls in Science is happening and it was created by the UN, the United Nations, who are trying to encourage more women to become scientists. So they've been working over the past 15 years to try and inspire and engage women and girls into science careers because a disproportionate amount of women go on to have careers in science compared to men. So even now, 2021, women and girls continue to be excluded from participating fully in science. And this means that the potential of a large proportion of the population is not being fully utilised. So discoveries or inventions might be being missed. If you think about some of the most important medical discoveries of recent years, for example, a lot of those things were discovered by women. So if women and girls are not able to pursue those careers in science, then those discoveries might not happen, which would be very bad. If we have a look at some of the statistics around this from UNESCO, at the moment, less than 30% of researchers worldwide are women. So if we think about what researchers are doing for us at the moment with our coronavirus vaccines, if we only let men become researchers, then all the ideas that women have won't be being used. Um, around 30% of all female students select STEM related fields in higher education. So only 30% of students are female. That means 70% are men, which is a lot more. And this is particularly low in three areas. So ICT or computing, only 3% of students are female. Maths and statistics, only 5% of students are female. And engineering, manufacturing and construction, only 8% of students are female. Now, this is a worldwide problem. It's not just here in the UK. And it's due to biases and gender stereotypes which have been around for a long time and sometimes they steer girls and women away from science related fields because those kinds of jobs are seen as just for men. So the aim of the International Day of Women and Girls in Science is to achieve full and equal access to and then participation in science for women and girls by trying to change people's views on gender stereotypes then to achieve gender equality in STEM fields, so 50% of those jobs would be men, 50% would be women, and to empower women and girls to take up more careers in STEM fields. This day is recognised all over the world and it's intended to get more females interested in and involved with science. There have been lots of well-known male scientists in history but not many female scientists are talked about and we need to talk about their achievements more because some fantastic scientific discoveries have been made by women in the past and there are many more women who are discovering things right now. Lots of people have stereotypical ideas about science like we talked about, however it covers a vast array of areas. So it's not just physics, biology, chemistry, that we learn in school at the moment. There are lots of areas, so we'll go into that in a minute. Now at Thornbury, we try to be inclusive with everything, and that includes science. A lot of our classes are named after famous scientists. You can see some of them here. So there's one Marie Curie, one Charles Darwin, one Jane Goodall, two Einstein, two Galileo, six Palmas, five Nobel. I might have missed some, sorry. Maybe you can think of some more. And also myself and Mr. Spalton have worked really hard to make sure that our science curriculum is inclusive as well. 
So every half term, everyone in school, in every year group, learns about a different scientist so that you know about a wide range of different scientists by the time you get to year six and you leave for high school. And these include a range of male and female scientists, um, a range of scientists from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, um, different countries, so that they are not just all men, all British, they are from lots of different places, lots of backgrounds. And we tried to make sure that you learn about an equal amount of female scientists as male scientists. Okay, so STEM. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. So do we know what all of these words mean? A scientist is someone who does experiments to find out more about nature, animals, the world, lots of other things. Technology is when machines have been made using new discoveries. Engineering is about designing, building, using engines, machines, designing and building different buildings, all kinds of different things. And maths is to do with numbers. So the maths helps us with everything. It helps us with designing, it helps us with building things, it helps us with new discoveries. So, can you think of an object which has been made by an engineer or somebody who works in technology in a STEM field? You might want to pause the video and have a think about it or talk about it with your teacher. So, hopefully you will have said that pretty much everything has been made by an engineer or somebody who works in technology in a STEM field. So, medicines, cars, planes, houses, buildings, all of those things have been made or designed by an engineer or somebody who works in technology. Okay, so let's think about women who are in STEM fields. So think of some famous scientists, engineers, mathematicians that you might know. How many of those names are men? How many of them are women? Why do you think most of the people who are famous in these fields are men? So I bet most of those names that you thought of are men. And that is because historically, men did science jobs, women did other jobs. What the UN and the International Day of Women and Girls in Science is trying to do is say that everyone is equal, as we know, so anybody can do those sorts of jobs. And things have improved, but there is still a long way to go with that. So, in the past, men have had more opportunities to study STEM subjects and get jobs in these areas. However, over the past 100 years, like I said, women have been doing more in STEM areas. So women have had equal access to education and the Equality Act tells us that people cannot be discriminated because of their gender. So some women have made their mark in STEM fields and we're going to have a look at some of these people now. And these stories will inspire you whether you are a girl or a boy. So the first person is Marie Curie. Now she's probably the most talked about female scientist in history. She discovered two new elements, polonium and radium. And she was the first female to be awarded a Nobel Prize in 1903. She was also the first person to win a second Nobel Prize in 1911. Scientists came from around the world to study radioactivity with Marie Curie and thanks to her discoveries and her work and her research, doctors have found that radiology could help with curing cancer. She died in 1934 from overexposure to radiation and this helped to put in place lots of safety measures which now protect scientists from the effects of radiation as well.
Another person, Maria Mitchell. So she was the first American female to become an astronomer. She discovered a comet in 1847 and the comet was named after her. It's called Miss Mitchell's Comet. And then we've got Irene Joliot Curie, who was the daughter of Marie Curie. And she won a Nobel Prize in 1935 for her discovery of artificial radioactivity. So her and her husband discovered that you could change one element into another. And her advancements in medicine are the foundations for what we know about nuclear fish fission today. So all of these people are pioneers in their fields. They were the first people to do things. We've also got Mary Anning, who I know some of you have looked at already. So Mary came from a really poor and uneducated background. So she lived in the 1800s and at that point girls did not go to school. So that makes her achievements even more amazing. So Mary would go to the beach, she lived near the beach, she would go with her father and they would clean up fossils and sell them to tourists. And in 1811, Mary's brother discovered a skull, which turned out to be a dinosaur. Mary discovered the rest of the skeleton a few months later, and she was only 12 when she did this, which is amazing. The remains were identified as an ichthyosaurus. They dated back 200 million years, and it was the first complete fossil of a dinosaur. She went on to discover other dinosaurs, mainly ones that lived in the ocean because she lived near the beach, near the sea. Uh, in England at the time, most people were really religious and they believed that the world began as the Bible dictated. So Mary's discoveries challenged the creation story from the Bible and scientists began to move away from religion paleontology was developed. Then we have got Elizabeth Garrett Anderson and my year two children are going to be learning about Elizabeth Garrett Anderson next half term. She was the first female doctor in England and she had to work really hard to become a doctor because she was not allowed into medical school because she was a woman. Only men were allowed to study medicine when she was younger. So this forced her to study nursing alongside men and all the men complained about a female being allowed to study alongside them which led to her dismissal from the course. So she was removed from the school. Elizabeth taught herself French so that she could study medicine in Paris instead and it's here that she achieved her medical degree. So she showed a lot of perseverance, she didn't give up even though she was thrown off her medical course, her nursing course. She decided I'm going to go to a different country and learn medicine there instead. And even this was still not enough for her to join the British Medical Register. She was rejected for being a woman. So if you want to be a doctor, you have to join the medical register. And she wasn't allowed to do that. So she decided that she would establish her own hospital, the new hospital for women. And this later became the London School of Medicine for women. And her efforts eventually paid off all that hard work that she put in because in 1876, female entry into the profession of medicine was legalised. So she changed things for all the females, all the girls who wanted to become doctors after her. Okay, so what I'm going to do is send to your teachers these videos for you to watch later on. One of them is about Jane Goodall and the others are just generally about female scientists. Some of them may not be suitable for Key Stage 1, so that is why I'm going to send them separately. Okay, if we look to more modern times, Jane Goodall 
was the most famous primate scientist in history. She still is, she's still alive now. She travelled to Tanzania to observe chimpanzees in 1960. She observed them and she saw that they were able to make and use tools and that they were not vegetarians, they ate different types of bugs, they didn't just eat plants. Jane's discoveries showed that chimps had their own personalities and they were able to express emotions. So before her discoveries, people thought that only humans could do this. Only humans could express emotion, only humans could make tools, but she proved that chimps were able to do it as well. And she lived with the chimps and observed their behaviours and habitats and habits for two years. Okay, and there's some other modern female scientists who you might want to do a bit more research about, mainly in the medical field. So we've got Corey Bargman. She uncovered the causes of conditions like autism and Alzheimer's. So her research is focused on the brain. Cynthia Kenyon, she found that you can alter genes and that could extend people's lifespans. So she is still working on that now. Elizabeth Holmes developed a groundbreaking blood tests using um, a needle to prick the blood instead of having to have a whole vial of blood. So this made things more efficient and more effective. If you know somebody who has got diabetes, this is how people check really quickly what their blood sugar is like. Jennifer Downer developed a potential cure for many diseases and she has developed genetic engineering so that scientists can make genetic changes. So this is groundbreaking research at the moment and scientists are still looking at how we can use this kind of um, research to help us. And she won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry last year in 2020. There's lots more that you can see as well that I've listed here who have been um, important scientists in the last few years. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with a quick experiment. So maybe your teachers in school can do this with you or if you are at home, you can do this with a grown-up. So you'll need some glasses, some drinks glasses or cups, all the same size, some food colouring and some paper towels. So what I will do is I will put this slide onto Dojo and then you will be able to have a go at the experiment and see if you can make water walk between all the different cups. Please make sure that you do this with an adult though. Okay, so thank you for listening to my assembly today. I hope you have learned something interesting about female scientists. I hope all you girls have been inspired by these important people. And remember, Thursday the 11th of February is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. See you later.